Well, it is still early days, but it's looking like a Joe Biden-Donald Trump rematch in the 2024 presidential contest. Among this backdrop is the rise of a centrist group called No Labels, which is considering running a third-party candidate on the presidential ballot. According to their website, they're targeting Americans who feel, quote, politically homeless and tired of extremes on the left and the right. Joining me live now is former White House Chief of Staff and now consultant at Bondi Partners, Mick Mulvaney. Great to see you, Mick. Um, how popular is this group becoming? Uh, not very yet. It's still early. We don't do third parties really well in this country, Laura. We uh, Every now and then someone will pop up and make a run for office. Um, Theodore Roosevelt did it back in the 1900s. Uh, we had some folks in the 1970s give it a shot in the 1980s, but it doesn't really go over very well and it's certainly never sustained. These folks, however, a bunch of centrists from both parties, Republicans and Democrats, who essentially said they don't like Biden and they don't like Trump, and they've raised $80 million. They don't have a candidate yet, and they probably won't until uh, the middle of next year, but $80 million in our system is pretty significant. So they are getting attention for that reason. Most Americans don't know who they are outside of Washington, D.C., but I can assure you that folks inside Washington are starting to pay very close attention. Yeah, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the state of American politics as well. There's a view that Joe Biden is too old and not up to the task. And uh, there are, you know, people that will always support Trump and can only see uh, that he does good. Uh, but then uh, what we've coined uh, normal Republicans who are kind of <laughs> wanting anyone but him. There's certainly a, a little bit of that. There's some polling data coming out that age is becoming a bigger issue for Joe Biden. You and I have talked about that before. And of course, the criminal uh, charges are looming over Donald Trump's head. And while that doesn't make a difference for the hardcore Trump Republican voters, it does make a difference for the centrist folks, the swing voters who might vote Republican one year and Democrat the next. So that's what these no labels folks are, are, uh, are targeting. I've talked to them. I've seen their data. They have data that uh, they suggest um, uh, will that they will pull evenly from both sides. One of the criticisms they're coming under from the Democrats is that they might give the, 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 the election to Trump, and the Republicans are criticizing them for maybe giving the election to Biden. But they've got data that says they might pull evenly from both sides, which would be a, a very unique and interesting thing in our political system. Yeah, OK, so what do we look forward to for the next 12 months, do you think? Do you think, you know, there's any going to be any unifying moment in America or are you just going to get further divided? Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about unified moments as I sit here in New York and I apologize for the sirens, but there's uh, several 9-11 celebrations going on as, mm -hmm. as, I, as I sit here. And the nation probably hasn't been as united um, in the last 20 years as it was on 9-11, and it's unlikely to. I don't think that no labels people are looking to unite the country as much as mm. they are trying to give us an option other than Biden and Trump. Keep in mind, if they say if it, they say that if it's not Biden versus Trump, they won't even offer a candidate. So they're very dedicated to this idea that they're not there to spoil. They're simply there to, to offer a, a, an alternative to Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Given it is the anniversary, 22 years since 9-11, uh, and those commemorations are going on there today. Many Australians first met Rudy Giuliani during that time. He was the mayor of New yeah. York. He was a, a pillar of a society. He was a real leader. Flash to today, and he is a diminished figure. What happened there? <laughs> Uh, I know it's a little um, off topic, but is, was he completely no, it, 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 captured it, it, it's by not the right? Because, it, it's not off topic. because you know, I talked last week about the discussion that more and more people are having here. Democrat, Republican, folks who don't have who have no interest in politics are talking more and more about the age of our public figures, especially about our public leaders. And you cannot help but think that Rudy Giuliani falls into that camp. He's a He's a, a, a walking clown show right now. There's stuff on the internet just in the last 24 hours. You can. It's sad to see somebody who led this city uh, and to a certain extent this nation through uh, through uh, through September 11, 22 years ago, um, essentially peddling pillows and slippers on television, which is what happened over the weekend. So no, I think it drives that larger debate. Look, we're going through generational change. There's all sorts of uh, of uh, of large forces at play. You're looking at older candidates versus younger candidates. You're looking at third party candidates. That it's, mm. This is going to be probably, everybody says it's the most important election of our lifetime. I don't necessarily believe that, but it's certainly going to be the most unique. People will be writing stories and books about this election cycle for generations to come.
Perhaps Rudy Giuliani is a cautionary tale and more emblematic with how our uh, politics, and more specifically in America, how politics and the media has gone. That you do you believe that you need to be to be more extreme to be noticed? And look, we have a, a compulsory voting system here, so our politics doesn't get that extreme. But that is kind of a product of of your system, isn't it? It is. You know, people will talk about the, the 50 or 60 percent of the people in this country who consider themselves centrist. Mm. The problem is that for the last generation or two or three, those folks have not participated in the in the general political process. They might vote every now and then, but they don't actually participate. Uh, they don't consume news media, for example. They don't follow politics. And it is the extreme on both sides that is really driving the debate. By the, by the time we have this conversation next week, you and I will be talking about a government shutdown driven in large portion, I think, by the extreme right wing of the Republican Party versus the extreme left wing of the Democrat Party. It's almost impossible now to get a, a compromise out of Washington, D.C. Against that backdrop, you can understand, LJ, why third parties uh, are at least being discussed. Again, we, typically they fail badly here. Given our electoral mm -hmm. winner-take-all system, however, you only have to win 34% of a state to get 100% of their electoral vote. So it is a system that could be ripe for a third party. Um, again, we don't do it very well, but they're going to try it this year, and certainly they're well-financed. And if they pick the right candidate, we'll be talking about them more and more. Well, we got a little philosophical today and a pleasure to do so with you, <laughs> Mick Mulvaney, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, LJ.